If you're accustomed to planting simple annual seeds where all you need to do is open a packet, put seeds in dirt, and then wait for them to sprout, the process of more difficult seed germination seems bizarre in comparison. For years, I avoided certain plants because their germination requirements were, to my, at the time, limited experiences, very intimidating. I'm sure some of you have felt the same if you read the words stratify or scarify and then moved on to easier seeds. Eventually, I decided to give it a go. Now I pour boiling water on some seeds, scrape others against sandpaper, and throw still others into a wet towel and banish them to the cooler for two months and then take a nap to the rest. Once the process is complete, the reward is a chance to grow some truly fascinatingly wonderful plants. Now, are you weirded out by the thought of having to do seemingly strange acts to germinate seeds? Maybe this guide can help you learn the ropes. Now, why do some seeds need treatment? All seeds are beautifully designed plant propagation packets. If you look inside a seed, you'll see variations on the same thing. An embryo with its cotyledons, the infant plant. The endosperm, which is a starchy portion that provides nutrition to the seedling before it really gets going with photosynthesis. And most pertinent to this discussion, the seed coat. The seed coat is the hard surface that surrounds and protects the seed prior to germination. With most of our normal garden seeds, all that's needed to get sprouting started is a little bit of water, soil, and sunlight. The seed coat will give way, but with some seeds, the seed coat is meant to protect the seed through the entirety of a long, cold, wet winter, which is why we see wheat seeds emerge from the dead-looking soil in the spring. The seed of certain plants just won't give away just with sun and water. It needs a serious wake-up call to let down its defenses. With some plants, this comes in the form of fire and smoke such as pyrophytic plants like lodgepole pines or the volatile seeded flowers of the cistus genus. With others, a certain period of freezing and thawing is necessary. And with still others, extensive soaking or even mechanical breaking of the seed coat is required to start germination. Now, though it may be annoying or challenging for the home grower to get these specialized seeds started, bear in mind that these seeds are often amazingly, perfectly adapted to their native environments. If they were grown on their home turf, they'd do these processes naturally. So when we start these seeds in our human ways, we're basically doing the best we can to mimic winter or a brush fire. Now, what kind of treatments do some seeds require? Soaking. Now, soaking is as simple as it sounds. Place the seeds in water until they've increased in size, typically 24 hours. Sometimes seeds require room temperature water, while others do better with an application of boiling water that is allowed to cool over a 24 hour soaking period. Scarification. Scarification is the process of physically scraping or cutting the seed coat until the inner seed is revealed. This allows water to infiltrate and stimulate the seed embryo and swell the starches of the cotyledon, allowing the seed to finally stretch its little sprouts and emerge. Sometimes scarification is necessary before soaking. Now a good idea is to use sandpaper. The reason sandpaper is often used for scarification is that it allows you to slowly abrade the surface of the seed until you've just broken through the seed coat. Holding a tiny seed steady enough to gently scrape a small section can be fiddly. And I confess I often scrape away as much as my fingertips and fingernails as I do seeds. Now call it the seed starter manicure and so wear it with pride. Now you often want to make sure you're wearing away the seed coat opposite to the embryo. With bean type seeds, this means working on the side opposite the helium, the eye. With other seeds, you have to do a little bit more research to know exactly where the embryo is situated. Stratification. Stratification refers to simulating winter's rest artificially, usually in a refrigerator. Some seeds will only sprout if they've been soaked, then kept in a chilly, near freezing state while wet for a certain number of days, usually somewhere between 30 and 60 days. Some seeds even need a certain chill, warm, chill, warm pattern. Soaking seeds, then storing them in a damp paper towel inside a plastic bag in the cool dark of the refrigerator, or in my off-grid cooler, is usually enough of a winter to get them to let down their defenses and begin sprouting. The biggest the biggest challenge with stratification is to remember to check your seeds on a regular basis. Labeling the bag with the date started, then checking on the seeds on a weekly basis is a good habit. If you forget and the cloth or paper towel gets moldy or dried out, your efforts might be in vain. Finally, if you notice any seeds germinating before their big chill is finished, plant them immediately. Smoking. Now for full disclosure, I have no experience using the smoke treatment on any of my own seeds. However, that said, if you are looking to establish any of the near 400 different plant species that require or are greatly aided by smoke for germination, we've got a link to a, an Australian website in the description box below that can get you started with creating your own smoke-infused water or monitoring a bushfire in miniature. Examples of seed sprout and success. Now, as you'll see in the examples I've got here, I've been working to reestablish some native perennial edible plants on my homestead. 
I want to renaturalize plants that were here before cattle grazed them away, as well as introduce new wild plants to forage and add to my perennial outdoor larder. Now, since these plants are all specifically adapted natives, they needed some of my somewhat bumbling human interference to make the transition from their seed packet to my hill, where I hope they'll take care of propagating themselves in the future. American Lotus, Nalumbu Latea. I've been wanting to reestablish this native edible in my pond for ages. With edible leaves, roots, and seeds, as well as the benefit of habitat creation for my pond critters, I'm looking forward to seeing these huge white blooms someday. Now, before anybody comments, I'm aware that American Lotus is considered invasive in some states, even though it is a native plant. I want this valuable plant to invade my isolated pond so I can manage it as a perennial food source. So if you really hate lotus, just try to fight it by learning how to eat it. Now, lotus seeds are tiny, impenetrable tanks. I can lay dormant in the pond muck for years or even decades before they sprout. In order to get them going, they need to be scarified, then soaked. I use sandpaper to work through the thick seed coat and then soak the seeds overnight. Once water could start infiltrating the seed, this coat softened and the seed swelled. I took a steak knife to the seed circumference, carefully avoiding their little belly button where the embryo was attached. The seeds then went into a jar of room temperature water and were left in the sun. The green embryo began pushing the seed apart. Some emerged after a week, while others took nearly a month, emerging to the waking world where my pond is happily waiting. Prairie Turnip, Pediomelum esculentum. This starchy-rooted prairie native was and still is used as a traditional food for indigenous American nations like the Lakota, and it once grew all across the Great Plains. Now this plant is native to the Ozarks, but rather scarce, as it was one of the plants that disappears when land is graved by livestock. I wanted to introduce it to my hill and see if it could make an important food source available here once again. The seeds needed to be scarified and then soaked in boiling water and then planted. After all that seeming abuse, it was wonderful to see them emerge from the soil into the sunlight. Purple Poppy Mallow, Kellerho involucrata. This beautiful flower, also sometimes called wine cups or buffalo rose, is both a drought tolerant prairie plant and a source of a rather large, starchy, edible root. I couldn't wait to get it growing on my dry hill. The seeds needed the boiling water treatment and then they were stratified for 30 days. After their overnight soak, they went into a clean, damp cloth that went into a cooler. After about 30 days, sure enough, the seeds woke up in the cooler and were beginning to spend their little white roots out into the world. I planted them everywhere, hoping to see the vibrant wine pink bloom soon. Now, though they seem to take a bit more work, I encourage you to give the more difficult seeds a try, whether you need to soak, scar, smoke, or stratify them. I was intimidated by this prospect for years, but now that I've given it a go, I can tell you it was an amazing process that only served to increase my appreciation for the wonders hidden in the tiniest of seeds.